From the printing press, to the telegraph, to the television, the conduct of journalism has been morphed by the medium from which it is consumed. Now, the internet is the latest medium to shift the practices and economics of the tradition. As online news consumption has risen, the newspaper business has declined dramatically, taking with it the journalistic traditions and revenue streams modeled in its image. So how have traditional news outlets adapted to the online medium? One of the most highly read news outlets online today is The Guardian, which has utilized the internet to catapult from a British print-based daily paper to a prominent player in the international online news sphere. The Guardian's online presence begins in 1996, not as a source of news and current events, but as a directory, perhaps due to the uncertainty of the internet at this time. It is not until 1999 that The Guardian becomes a source of news with a distinguishable front page that is synonymous with print media. Before August 2000, the website introduced the top stories section of current events with corresponding photographs. This month also features the first reference to audio reports as the website begins to embrace the multimediality of the internet. The option of paid-for services materializes toward the end of 2003, promoting The Guardian's crossword puzzles access and a premium ad-free website. June 2004 features the first introduction of the online digital edition. The website offers readers the option to browse the digital edition on a demo basis. In November 2004, the service bar prioritizes ad-free site perhaps signaling a new direction for economic ventures. Additionally, this month found the loss of the digital newspaper on the front page. This may signal a shift of priorities from selling online copies to the curation of a premium website. The middle period of The Guardian's online history from 2006 to 2013 witnessed a period of experimentation in creating new opportunities for reader engagement. In 2006, we see the first appearance of a new feature, a blog called Comment is Free. The addition coincided with The Guardian's adoption of a new web-first approach in the same year, in which news content was uploaded to the site as soon as it was publishable. This blog was created as a space for readers to respond directly to conversations happening among Guardian journalists and commentators, and as a kind of Habermasian public sphere where readers could be given a voice in the discourses forming around current events. However, the adaptation was still somewhat asymmetrical, as readers could not start their own threads. Only Guardian-affiliated commentators could. This effort was partly inspired by the success of the Huffington Post, a news site founded as a blog and comment-driven space. When confronted with an ever-expanding and flourishing blogosphere, the Guardian took what we might call a transmedial approach to bring conversations into the Guardian space. In other words, they integrated a characteristic feature of interactivity and conversation found in the blogosphere and adapted it to their own ends. However, the idealism of this interactivity would not last, as it became apparent over time that comment spaces could be misused as a platform for hate speech and abuse. At present, only a few articles on The Guardian's website are open to comments, all of which are moderated and some of which are pre-moderated, meaning that comments have to be approved before they're made public. It is also during this period that we see the further integration of multimedia forms into the news content on the front page, another feature which we might also trace back to the blogosphere. In 2007, a latest multimedia heading appears on the lower part of the homepage with photo, video, and audio resources related to news content. Over time, some of these multimedia extras get embedded underneath the headings themselves, suggesting that online journalistic practice is extending into new media forms. In more recent years, The Guardian's homepage undergoes many design shifts. The first takes place toward the end of 2014, when the top bar is switched from white to blue. Articles on the homepage are now split into sections, with headlines and highlights sections always appearing above the fold. 
This new style is a customizable container format and is still utilized on the site today. The Guardian stated that the new format reflects the way that people consume news and features rather than the ways that they are produced. This is just one of the ways that The Guardian has adapted from a traditional media format to the rules of online news. Most significantly in this period, The Guardian experiments with asking online readers for financial support. One of the first instances of this happens in August 2015, when a banner appears along the bottom of the homepage appealing to the reader to support The Guardian's journalism through monetary contribution. Upon visiting this page, the reader is asked to become a member and can then choose between specified contribution amounts. The Guardian's requests for financial support intensify over time. In mid-2016, the option to become a supporter appears as a button on the top left, solidifying this revenue stream in the site architecture. In 2017, readers are able to place a one-off contribution, an option that might appeal to casual readers or those with tighter pockets. The Guardian continues to play on reader affinity with the brand as an avenue for online monetization, carving out its place within the online newscape aptly through the use of a banner in 2018. And The Guardian is right. Many other news organizations have put up paywalls or ask users to register to access content. These news organizations have reacted to the need to monetize their online offering by restricting some or all of their journalism to only those readers who can pay for it. The Guardian, on the other hand, might nudge its readers toward making a monetary contribution, but it never restricts access to articles, setting it apart in an online newscape in which quality journalism is often restricted to those who can pay for it.